Nevada's rugged terrain has been the site of many plane crashes over the years. Tonight, Greg Cadlib introduces us to a man who's made a hobby out of searching the far reaches of the state for wreckage. Death takes the controls and with awful suddenness, a luxury airliner crashes into remote mountains such as these. Out of a mist of uncertainty, searchers report sudden death on a snow-clad peak near Las Vegas, Nevada. 22 victims, including 15 Army flyers and Carol Lombard and her mother. Aircraft accidents might seem like an unlikely topic for outdoor enthusiasts, but hikers, mountain bikers, off-roaders, and others know that there are many crash sites in southern Nevada. For example, most folks who've lived here a while know that Mount Potosi, southwest of Las Vegas, is the site of the January 1942 plane crash that killed Carol Lombard and others. While some wreckage remains, much was intentionally buried at the site. And hikers who summit Mount Charleston on the South Loop Trail walk past the wreckage of a C-54 that went down in November 1955. 14 military and civilian engineers and a payload of top secret equipment perished in the crash. Aircraft accidents, of course, are tragic events, yet they do occur, and in rugged terrain, the wreckage is sometimes left in place. Doug Scroggins, a native Las Vegan, has made the investigation of old crash sites an avocation and is pioneering a field he calls aviation archaeology. Aviation archaeology is primarily the documentation uh, and the research in locating these historical aviation accidents. Two crash sites we visited were of an F-86 and an F-100. Getting to the F-86 was a fairly easy hike. Well, this is one of the wing sections. And we found the spread of the wreckage confined to the small ravine where the jet went down. Mr. Scroggins' acquisition of crash reports and his knowledge of aircraft were essential to understanding what lay before us. Well, Craig, what we're looking at here is what's left of an F-86E e model and uh, more of the Korean War uh, era. Uh, they flew a number of E models in the Korean War. What year did this go down? Uh, this airplane crashed April 9th, 1953. The pilot did eject safely. Uh, they were training just above us here, uh, similar to the war games that they uh, do today. And uh, this pilot, uh, inexperienced in the high-speed stall, uh, had ejected, wasn't able to recover. And uh, here in front of me now is the stabilizer section of the F-86. And the vertical then would sit right up through here. Mr. Scroggins is also able to offer insights as to the possible nature of a crash. This here is the uh, right wing. Of course, it's upside down. This is the, uh, the fairing, leading edge. And let's flip it over. Just watch your fingers. It's a cougar flap, forward slap. And you can still see where the riding US Air Force is on it. It didn't strike on the right wing at all. We obviously saw that. There was you know, very little damage at all to the leading edge of the, uh, the right wing. Uh, I have not found anything from the left wing. So my guess is that's where it struck first, first contact. Well, what I got here, Craig, is uh, the combat camera lens. The whole housing, you can see the glass in there, and you can see the adjustments for the focus and iris. Uh, in relatively good condition for uh, smack in the side of a mountain, I must say. Uh, this just also goes to show that uh, it didn't really hit nose down when it impacted. Crash sites such as this are more common than many of us realize. Southern Nevada area, there's more than several hundred of them. Crash sites out there, yeah. And uh, just like this. And it gives you an idea of, uh, of the, not just the history alone, but the, I guess some people look at it more as trash, but uh, from my standpoint, this is a very historical crash site. It's a history of Nellis. While some may find this pursuit a little out of the ordinary, the good news is that the analysis of crash sites in general has resulted in many improvements in aviation technology, making commercial air travel our safest means of conveyance. 
Though both sites we visited are visible from a well-traveled highway, the F-100 was a little steeper hike. Doug, can you tell me what this aircraft is and about when it went down? Well, the, uh, the wreckage we're looking at here along this ridge is from an F-100, A model. And this is the first uh, F-100 uh, to crash uh, that belonged to the Nellis inventory hmm. of Nellis Air Force Base. Uh, this crash happened August 12th of 55, pilot ejected, and uh, he only suffered minor injuries, lacerations to the back of his neck. And the debris that we see here is from the farthest point of impact. Okay, which was on that ridge right there. Correct. And as you can see, you can see some chromate pieces. Exactly, some stuff metallic. scattered all the way down. Yeah, the, the stainless bottom. steel pieces you can see, which stand a little bit more so than the aluminum. Okay, shall we get closer? I'm with you on that. Unlike the F-86 site, this one was on an open ridge and debris was widely scattered. One of the larger pieces at the site of the F-100 was the protective metal plate behind the pilot's seat. Okay, so the pilot would have been positioned in front of this. The pilot would sit here, and uh, keep in mind there is an ejection seat right. attached to this. And uh, when he fires off that, that igniter, which uh, I wouldn't doubt if you see some evidence of burning, but no. But uh, when he fires off that igniter, uh, he leaves the aircraft at a very high rate of speed. As you can see, the size of an F-100 is a relatively large jet. And at the speed it was traveling, uh, there's very little left uh, from impact. Uh, some of these pieces are just inches in diameter. And uh, there's really not much left of this super saber jet. Hey, Craig, check this out over here. Uh, I'm in the area where the uh, aircraft made first contact. Right in this. Which looks like, yeah, the crater. There. And you can see some of the uh, windscreen. There's, there's quite a bit here for being where it's at. Um, and I'm surprised to find some of the items that we have found. Uh, you know, some of the pieces we found, I figured, you know, they would have automatically picked up, being it was an engine failure. But uh, it is significant uh, for the history of Nellis. And it seems that history, in fact, is the reason that Doug Scroggins, like many others, has taken to researching aviation accidents. This whole thing originated from Europe. I mean, the whole concept of aviation archaeology. And it's only because of the war, World War II. And it, it expanded to the US and the states here. And uh, it's picked up a great deal. While aviation and archaeology may seem incongruous at first, it is a natural progression. Man studying the remnants of his past as he rediscovers them in the world around him.